Hi everybody, welcome to another video. And in this video, I'm just gonna show you the steps I take to make uh, these simple earthen World War II bunkers. So this is partly in response to Ken from Miniature Wargaming Warriors who put out a bit of a terrain challenge, but I don't have any generic terrain that I really need to build. However, this was basically fairly straightforward um, and can be used for a variety of armies. So I'm gonna show you how I did this. Um, I mostly make it out of scrap pieces. Um, it's fairly quick, fairly simple, and uh, in the end, you have something looks a little bit like this. So there's my two little Germans. So I'm gonna make one that will comfortably fit two models with a removable roof and the boards inside. And as you'll see, it's a fairly quick, simple process. So I'll just put this one on one side and I'll get the bits out and show you what you need to make it. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna need is some kind of base. So I'm using this, which is just the remains of an old drawer. Um, sort of broken and cut into shape. Doesn't matter that it's really rough because uh, some of the processes we're going to do later are going to get rid of that. Um, you're going to need some coffee stirrers, liberated caringly from any uh, coffee joint anywhere. <laughs> uh, but you can get like stacks of these on, on eBay as well. You're going to need something to form the structure of the bunker itself. Now, you could really use anything for this, but I've got some leftover uh, styrofoam um, which is just a couple of centimeters thick so I'm gonna use that um, and then I've also just got some some debris which I'm going to use now all of the off cuts so you can see here I've got those keep those because you'll be able to build up your your ground form with that and the final thing which I would basically say makes up the majority of it is some kind of modeling compound or clay so I'm gonna use the Luke APS um, Geek gaming stuff. Um, it's pretty cheap and uh, you can use it on a lot of things, including bases. So I'm going to use some of this. Um, so the first thing you need to do is actually build the walls of the bunker. So let's get started. Okay, so as you can see, I've made a really simple plan um, on the styrofoam of what I'm going to do. Now, it, or the only thing you've got to make consistent is the height. Um, the bunkers aren't going to be sort of uniform and you can adjust things as you're building up the ground level around it but there's basically on here there's seven components that you need there's the front of the bunker which is slightly lower so the guy's gun can stick over the top and the best thing you can do is just get one of your models and just measure him up against it and be bearing in mind that he'll be a bit on raised up inside the bunker as well okay then there's the two main parts of the walls which are slightly higher two other bits here which will form um, sort of a, a bit of a back wall and then this is the way in with a slope um, to allow access. Um, as I say the measurements you, you have to change them depending on your model but just remember you need one that allows the model to actually see out um, and the rest have all got to be at least the height of the model so you can see here they are and that's all I do I don't sit there measuring everything I literally just get the model put it on the styrofoam and I'm going to get cutting so I'm going to cut all these pieces out um, and show you what happens next. Okay, so I've got all my walls cut out. So I'm just gonna put those on one side. Main thing, keep all of the offcuts because I'm gonna use those to build up the base. Nothing's gonna to go to waste. Um, and the next thing we want to do is to build up the woodwork on the inside. So now what I do, so I very simply get coffee stirrers. I use a pair of clippers, take off one end there. And I don't bother measuring this. All I do is I get them on here and then I just clip them to size and then I just rinse and repeat with that one piece. And you're going to want to do this for all of them and then basically stick them on to each side with PVA, which I'll show you now in a bit of a time lapse.
Okay, so now all the walls are dry. Um, it's just time to basically stick this part together. This is the most fiddly bit, um, the bit I've just done, so you'll be glad to hear. Um, one thing I had to do, I had to trim both of these parts down, just so that it fits together a little bit nicer. Um, but yeah, so basically what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna stick down the walls in, a, in the pattern that I want, and then I'm gonna stick down um, enough of these leftover pieces around the outside to start building the area up. So when we put the modeling compound on it, we've already got a bit of formation um, that we can use. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll come back in a second. Right, so the superstructure is now mostly dry, and as you can see, I've built up the landform. So there's just one more thing to add before we start to add on the really messy stuff, and that's I just wanna add some supports um, into some key places in here. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I've already pre-measured this, and I'm gonna use matchsticks, but you could use cocktail sticks, you could use uh, more of these coffee stirrers. I'm just gonna paint in some glue where I want these supports to go. And so generally, I tend to put them in the corners, or basically where there's anything I want to cover up. I just get one, I just drop it in. Like so. And I'll do another one. I'll do one on this side. That. Here. There is a bit of a gap there. However, when we use the modeling compound, that will get filled. Right, I'm just going to speed through the rest of this and show you what I mean. Okay, now that's basically mostly dry, uh, it's time to get messy and I'm going to use uh, this modeling compound from Geek Gaming and I'm going to create the ground forms. So basically you want to mix this, uh, it's about a 3 to 1 ratio, like not particularly exact. I'm just going to use my hands to mix it up. I've tried using sort of coffee stirrers and things like that but they never seem to really work. Um, so it goes to, you want it to get it sort of like a mushy paper mache macaroni cheese like consistency. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of water in. Up. And if it goes so that it's probably a bit too a bit too wet. So add a little bit more in. Baking a cake. A really plastery <laughs> chalky cake right that's much better okay so i tend to do this in small little patches and this stuff tends to go off and dry between 15 minutes to half an hour the outside surface certainly goes hard in 15 minutes so you'll be able to paint on it and then it dries all the way through so that's the kind of consistency that you want and then we bring this back in and we get some of this and basically just start piling it up and pushing it into the cracks and the crevices. So I'm gonna carry on doing this and uh, I'll come back to you when we've got it all on.
Right, as you can see, that's gone on basically rock hard now. Um, that is not going anywhere. So we're gonna do the roof. So to do the roof, all you've got to do is get a piece of card or some material that's roughly the shape of the, the roof or the area you want it to be. And as you can see, that will be the opening. Now I like to leave a bit of this trench open at the back. I like the idea of people firing down into it and it gives you a bit, a bit more light into there when you're modeling. Um, you could always cover that more if you wanted to. So now, basically, I'm gonna smack on some more of this and I'm gonna make sure that it covers the whole of this plate and also the lip. So it basically comes over and I'm gonna blend it a little bit. The one thing you must do is make sure you lift it off at the end to break any of the modeling compound that has formed over the edge. So otherwise it will just sit there in place. Okay, so that's dry now, and as you can see, fits on nicely, and we have the basic shape of everything done. So the next stage is to give the whole thing an undercoat. I'm gonna use just a black rattle can for this, um, so any black primer will do. Once done, I'm then going to paint the woodwork in there, and then we'll start doing all the, uh, the ground works. Right, so I've given that an all over undercoat of, in this case, Chaos Black. I've made sure to get everywhere, so that will now provide us with a nice stable platform to work on. So now I'm going to use Mornfang Brown, and I'm just going to do all of the woodwork. But to be honest, any kind of mid light brown will work, so I'm going to put a wash over it anyway. Now, while that's drying, I'm going to undercoat all of the earth with this uh, tester pot of just, you know, brown paint from a hardware store. Uh, it's just a mid-brown and it's just going to be the base for all of the earth colours. Next step, all I'm gonna do is apply Agrax Earth Shade all over the woodwork. And I'm just gonna slap this on very liberally. And I'm not gonna be doing any dry brushing after this because most of the time you won't see this because it would all be in shadow anyway. I'm just gonna use P3 Paint uh, Formwood Green and I'm just gonna paint the tree with that. And all I'm gonna do after that is give that a wash of uh, Wildwood, the Citadel Contrast Paint. Now adding Wildwood. Right, so now it's time to do the easy bits, so I like doing this the best. So now it's time to add the ground covers on. So I've got my own ground cover mix, which uh, is a mixture of earth and tile grout and coffee and all sorts of little bits of foliage and different colored stuff just to, to give it a, a nice texture. You could just use sand and then dry brush it and paint it, but this saves so much time. I'm gonna use the Luke APS basing glue because this dries nice and quickly and this was meant to be a fairly quick piece of terrain anyway and all I'm going to do is just slop all this on paint it on and then pour that ground cover all over it Now, 
Right, so that's all dried. Um, I forgot to say, make sure you do the uh, the top as well. And as you can see, I think that looks pretty cool, especially with the uh, the ground covers on. So if you were doing something World War One, or you want to make it look like it's only just been made, that would probably do you. You know, you just got earth there. But we're going to add some turf onto it. I want it to look like the position has been here a while, and they're just trying to, you know, blend it in with what's there. I've also done the base in there, just so you can... Uh, Blend it in with everything else, and there's our guy. And that should sit. There we go. Right, so the next day, I'm going to put some static grass down. I am using 6mm uh, dead grass mix, and I'm going to put that over certain patches. Um, and then all we've got to do after that is add a few more bits of flock and weeds and some flowers, um, and then it's done. So I'll get on to that now. Okay, and now I'm going to add uh, some weeds and such to it. So I'm just going to put on some popsicle. Right, I'm not entirely sure what happened to my audio here, but I lost it, so I've just got to do a little bit of a voiceover to finish. Um, once the static grass and all the weeds are dry, I'm just adding clump foliage and flowers all over the base just to give it a bit of colour. Right, and there we go, it's all done. There are a couple of things you could do here, some finishing touches, you could add some details inside, you could dry brush up the tree on the outside, but I'm completely happy with this level of detail. Um, I've done two of these now, and I'm gonna be using them in my World War II games, maybe as objectives or as you know, actual defensive positions. Um, I'm really pleased with it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, then give the video a like, subscribe. There's going to be some more videos coming out. It's just been too damn hot recently. Um, but uh, I'll leave some photos up at the end. And I hope you guys are all well. Cheers.